Hello all my knitty friends. Welcome to Hudson Valley Knits. This is episode 35, Vogue Knitting Live 2015. I am Amy, uh, also known as Memers on Ravelry and um, Memers66 on Instagram and Twitter. So welcome back. I'm inside again. We um, just had some snow yesterday and um, but as soon as the weather allows, I will be outside podcasting, no matter how cold. So I have so much to share. First, I just want to welcome everybody back or welcome new viewers. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to share my nitty adventures with me. I am, um, whew, I've been so busy. <laughs> I'm trying to get this podcast in. Uh, it's hard because um, we're at the home stretch for my renovated kitchen and um, the sheetrock is up and it's time to do the spackling and sanding and I, I my hands are swollen because of all the sanding I did yesterday and um, I really have to get back to doing the second coat of spackle uh, or mud, some of you might call it mud. Um, so. Um, just to let you know, I'm trying to get this done because my son's on is going to be here soon making a big racket using some electric sander and whatnot. So I'm trying to get this done and then I have to get back to work and then hopefully I can get this online tonight before I go to bed. It is Sunday the 24th, I think. And I'll tell you in a second. Yes, it's no, it's the 25th. Oh dear. Okay, so it's Sunday, January 25th, and I have a lot to show you despite how busy I've been. <laughs> um, I also, um, before I get going, the news. So uh, just a little bit of stuff to share. I'm not going to talk too much about the Senior Love Along, um, only to say that I'm still waiting to hear back from Molly um, from the nursing home. She's the... Uh, activity coordinator there and she promised to get back to me with a list of seniors at the veterans nursing home in Montrose um, that would really enjoy participating in a adopt a senior program so check out the thread for more information and please sign up the more the better um, but it is a serious commitment so if you can't no problem you could always knit some washcloths so i'll be handing out washcloths to the seniors at the veterans nursing home in, Mount, in montrose new york at the end of the year during the holiday time uh, i did it last year and it was a huge success they loved it it made so many of the seniors so happy so I'm definitely doing it again. So if you can't commit to a serious um, uh, amount of time, or, um, then please uh, just knit as many cotton, 100% cotton washcloths that you can. And there will be a finished object um, thread for that. And there will be prizes at the end of the year. So that's all I'll say about the senior love along. Once I hear back from Molly, I'll really get into all the details and start assigning people to their adopted seniors. I also wanted to um, mention again that I have a, a 2015 goals contest going on. It's a year-long contest. There will be huge prizes at the end of the year for this as well. And um, the details are in a thread in my Ravelry group, Hudson Valley Knits. And um, you have until, you know, I forget, did I say the end of February or the end of January? I think I said you have the end of February to finalize your 2015 knitting goals. After that, you definitely can still sign up for this contest. Um, it's just um, the prizes will only be um, for um, objects you have knit since you um, from the point you committed to uh, your goal list. Um, and if that doesn't make sense, please read the thread. It's very it's, it's spelled out, I hope clearly there. so check that out and join with that. 
So I went to Vogue Knitting Live, um, not last weekend, the weekend before. It's been two weeks. And I had such a great time. And um, if you want to hear a little about it, you could also go to Moms with Yarn podcast. I kind of filled in for Tracy, one of the um, hosts for that podcast. She's and her, she and her family have all been sick, and she hasn't been able to podcast for a while. So Sharon from Moms with Yarn asked me to fill in, and I did, and we had a great time. So you can check that out because we were both at Vogue, even though we didn't run into each other. But I will go over with you a lot of what I did towards the end of the, at the end of the podcast. I'll go over and I'll share, you know, what I did that weekend. So uh, now I will just get into my knitting and spinning. And I'll start with my whips. So a while back, um, Plucky Knitter, who was at actually a um, gauge and tension yesterday, which is a a knitting store in Brooklyn, but I dare not go because I just can't. Um, th they put out a um, a collection of knitwear called Bundled Up, and I jumped. I saw this one pattern, and I jumped on it. I it's by Amy Miller, and it's called Ice Shanty. Um, this is not a good, oh, here's a good picture of it. Um, I love, love, love. So here, here it is. Ice Shanty. I think it was very popular. So it kind of has a, um, a cowley capelet around it. It's all one piece, uh, attached. Um, and then in the back, it is longer than in the front. And in the front, it has these cool pockets. Uh, like this, right? So it's very loose and baggy, and you can see on this side here how she's, um, it's shorter in the front than in the back. I might make it a little shorter in the back than that, uh, only because I, I don't want it hanging below my, my, my bum. I just think that's a little too much, but any, anyway, I, Either way, I just love, love, love this pattern. I had in my stash um, that I had actually bought with the intention of knitting the um, pumpkin ale sweater by Isalda. It's um, Miss Babs Heartland, and it's in the colorway um, Pewter. It's a gorgeous gray with like blue undertones. Oh, I still can't. This is just not getting the um, color very well. Um, no, huh? Oh, so sorry about that. But, um, see there's the sunlight on this side. Um, sorry, on this side. But, uh, it's a beautiful dark charcoal gray, but it's got some like blue to it. Love it, love it. But I wanted to jazz it up a bit, so I bought this Violet color. Sorry for the. Oh, that you're pretty much seeing it um, right there. Um, and, and I'm gonna do the the cape around the shoulders in this. So I did finish one piece, and I wanted to talk about this. So I I did block this out. This is kind of um, one of the panels in the front, but it's also my swatch. So I knit this in size eight needles, and then I measured it, and it was perfectly at gauge. And then I soaked it. So I wanted to talk about this because it all. Uh, I also was in a class at Vogue that kind of talked about gauge a little bit, and uh, I had a panic attack because after I soaked it, and it's 100% merino, not superwash. Um, but just 100% merino. After I washed it, and it was like, and I'm not exaggerating, it was like five inches longer than before I washed it. And by wash, I mean just soak in um, water and and some uh, woolly wash. 
and I was panicking because my stitch count was staying the same, but this is such a row count, uh, row gauge counts a lot with this because of the sizing and it's knit in panels and sewn together. So your row gauge has to be really good so that when you sew it together, everything matches, etc. But I didn't panic. So I didn't stretch it out. I just laid it flat to dry. And then once it dried completely, I hung it overnight from a hanger by and I at the end I put some um stainless steel double pointed needles. We wove it through to add some weight because I wanted to see if like alpaca this yarn was going to stretch out and be like super super long. If so, I wanted to compensate for that because like I said, I don't want it to be super long. I want it to be just below, just just at the bottom of my bum in the back. So I did that overnight and it really retained its length and I measured again for gauge my after block measurements and I was still at gauge. So I just wanted to bring this up. So if you are I hear all the time about people not measuring, not doing gauge and kind of saying, well, I know what I'll get and they do, but different fibers react differently once they're bathed or worn a lot. And so I implore you, especially if you're investing a lot of money in yarn to wash and block and hang it to make sure that your row and um, stitch gauge are accurate. Why row gauge? Because of armholes. If you're knitting a sweater, you want your armholes to be the right size, you need to have an accurate row gauge. So I have that, and I also started the next piece, which has the um, ribbing. And this is going to be, I think, one of the front pieces. So that is my ice shanty sweater so far. It's all stockinette stitch, purl and knit and purl and knit and I don't mind purling. I actually love purling. But so this is my mindless knitting, which is usually a pair of vanilla socks, but now this is my mindless knitting and this is in my Amy Beth uh, fat squirrel bag, my gnome winter bag, which I love. It's a sweater size bag for my sweater. So that is one. Now, I also have worked on Mark's sweater, but shamelessly little, a uh, shamefully little. And uh, it's okay because my finished object is for Mark, so hopefully he'll forgive me. But I've only done, if that, an inch or so. However, the class I took at Vogue, which was on sweater um, designing, is going to help me tremendously now with this. So. Here's March sweater, and if you see here, I've barely done an inch. But like I said, this is not mindless ending. I'll probably work on it tonight during, um, um, oh my gosh, Downton, during Downton Abbey, I'll be working on this. So this will get some love now that I finished Mark's socks, which I'm going to show you in a minute. That's my other whip. I also am working on a, um, a Instagram knit along. Let me get the name of that knit along for you. It is, I have to look it up. It's for Oblivious Knits, any Oblivious Knits pattern. And the tag is, actually, let me do that. Oh, shoot. Sorry. H O O. <laughs> tag. H O O H O O, which I'm not sure what that stands for. I G, which is Instagram, K A L knit along. I'm sure one of those O is oblivious uh, for oblivious knits. And um, it's any oblivious knits pattern, which are still on sale until February first. Can um, be f and needs to be finished by the end of February and there are prizes available and again the hashtag is H-O-O-I-G-K-A-L-O-N 2015 at the end. 
All right, so if you're interested in checking that out. Um, and I am knitting the Blight Shawl by Oblivious Knits. Let me see if I can get a better picture of it. Because I, I, my printout is snakes. I don't work too much on this either. Um, but, come on. Blight 61. You can see if I can find a pretty one that's finished for you. Ooh. Here's one finished. Oh, it's beautiful. All right. Sorry. Oh, here it is. So here it is. This is her photograph of light. a little bigger for you. Beautiful lace stitch pattern. Um, it's a predominantly triangular shawl. There's the, oops, sorry. And I am doing it with my homespun. This is a loop bat, chain plied. This is what I have left, and here is what I have. I don't have a marker in this, sorry, but I really, really am loving knitting this, and it's just, it's not mindless, you have to pay attention, but I can't wait to wear, finish this and wear this. And I love the way the homespun came out, I love this pattern, I think it's beautiful, it's well written. And, uh, yeah, so I hopefully I'll knit more on this, too, during this coming week. And, uh, yes, and that is also in an Amy Beth, a.k.a. Fat Squirrel Gnome Winter Bag that I got after Christmas, I think. Love gnomes. Love Amy Beth bags. So I had to get them. What else? Um, uh... Is that it? No, because I also cast on, what did I do with them? Oh, so these are gonna be ripped out, but I wanted to show them to you before I rip them out. So I'm, I'm ripping them out. I haven't done much yet. Let me see if I can find a pattern. I haven't done much yet. Um, because I just started them yesterday because I finished Mark's sock. Uh, let me get my pattern page up. This is a uh, Hunter Hammison sock pattern. And, oops. Cute. Come on. And it only comes in one size, which I kind of don't like about this pattern. It really does, it tells you what your gauge should be, and it only gives you one cast on amount. And it doesn't give you any alternatives. It's M Mash Shod from her Silk, Wo Wo <laughs> Silk Road Socks book. And I think I have almost all of Hunter Hammerson's books because I love her beautiful patterns. Here's what it will look like. And I... Really like it because it has some solid sections, but it's not boring vanilla sock. I shouldn't say boring. It's not just plain vanilla sock, but it does have some panels where you could just yet let the yarn be beautiful. And I am using my Bill Draper Make Stuff Splendor Sock Yarn in the colorway Fireside. It is Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. And I started this initial one on 2.5s. The cast on is 64 stitches. And usually I knit my socks on 2.25s or size 1. And I knit them with <clears throat> 72 stitches for my foot. I like my socks just a little bit looser than, than most people do. Um, I don't, I like negative ease, but just not as much as most people. So I'm, this is just the ribbing so far, and I just love how it's coming out in this yarn. And I would be devastated if 
I knit the socks, these socks, and didn't would not be able to wear them. So I am going to rip this out, and I am going to try them on a, the next size up, which would be a size 2. These are 2.5s. So even this was one size bigger than I usually knit my socks with, and I thought that would be enough. But I can tell just by looking at them that they would be too tight. And I don't want to knit a whole sock to not be able to wear it. So here's the fire side, by the way. It's a gorgeous color. It's more red and less pink than you're seeing. But it does have some pink in it, and it's got brown, and it's just really, really fiery and gorgeous. That's good. That's good right there. You can see there's just a little bit of pink, but it's mostly red and brown. And I just love it because it's very natural looking. And yeah, so this will be ripped out. I didn't rip it out last night because I wanted you all to be able to see it. And I don't know if I'll have time to cast it on again today because, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take it out right now because I have uh, to get back to work and put another coat of mud on my kitchen walls. But um, hopefully by next podcast, you'll see um, a, lot of, a, little, a lot more progress on this sock. So this is not vanilla sock knitting, and one of my 2015 goals were to knit some non-vanilla socks. So here I already got my size twos out. Um, and and uh, so and knit at least, I think it was two or three pairs of socks that have a unique pattern to them. And uh, this will be the first one. And speaking of which, um, those are all my knitting whips. I do have a finished object for my whips, and this I consider, these are March socks, I consider them vanilla socks only because the stitch pattern I put in them was just, uh, it was very, very basic and um, nothing intricate or anything like that, so um, I count it as a vanilla sock, and put this away. I like, to keep, I like to keep my labels in with my projects so always. Let me show you that. So here are Mark's socks made with socks that rock medium weight, Rocktober colorway. This had six ounces, which is beautiful because Mark has huge feet and needs a lot of yarn. And ta-da, here are Mark's socks. Love the colors. He loves them too. Um, and so basically I call them CD, Mark CD socks because it kind of looks like a seed stitch, but it's not. It's just um, alternating three stockinette stitches and then pearl, knit pearl. The next row, three stockinette stitches, pearl, pearl, pearl. And the next row, three stockinette stitches, Pearl knit pearl. And then uh, in the next repeat where there were the three stockinette stitches, I did the the pearl patterning and then over where previously I was doing the pearl patterning, I did the stockinette. So it kind of alternated and it gave it this seed stitch kind of look, but it's not. Let's see if you can see that. You can see that a little bit. You see you can see there's stockinette, there's some pearl patterning, stockinette, pearl patterning. I don't know. I just kind of broke it up a little, which I kind of like. So these are Mark's socks. Now, I kept weighing these because I wanted to make sure, and I can't explain this. I just wanted to make sure I wanted to, that I would have enough yarn for both. So I weighed, I weighed, I weighed, and then when I finished the first stock, I made sure I had half left, you know, for the second, right? And I did these cup down. So what I was doing was I was basically when I got towards the toe, um, I had I made sure that I had at least half of the yarn left. Otherwise, I would have had to kind of rip it out a bit. Because Mark wanted a tall sock. He didn't want a short sock. Well, I did run out. Despite my fastidious weighing of the skein, um, I shouldn't have because according to my calculations, I had just half of the skein left when I started the second sock, but I, 
I might have um, put an extra repeat in, I think, because I ran out of yarn right here on the uh, toe. And I was really kind of irked about it. I'm like, but I made it, waited, and I couldn't figure it out. So what I did is I had some leftover socks at Rock Medium. And it was, I forget the name of the colorway. It's something Jules. Let me see. If it should be in my, um, close that. It should be in my stash. Uh, um, but I had gotten at Vogue New York Live, the first Vogue, uh, Vogue Knitting Live in New York City. The first one, the very first one I got this, this skein. So it is the colorway, I have to go to all used up. And it was the colorway. Where are you? Socks that rock. Oh, tell me I can't find it. It's something about jewels, jewel tones in it. And I can't find it. Dirty Water Dye Works, Desert Biscuit. I can't find it in my used up stash, but anyway, I might not have, could I not have entered it? It is a, close enough that you cannot tell that it is a different color. And if you look closely though, you can see where this blue is. That's kind of where I joined it in. So the, the reddish color here, that matched perfectly the Rocktober. But what the Rocktober doesn't, or the Jewel Tone didn't have was the, the yellows and oranges, but it had more of these blues. So it kind of, um, it blended in very nicely. So I looked out, and uh, that's why you should keep your scraps. So I'm going to keep this because I think um, Socks at Rock Medium is the go-to sock yarn for Mark. And as long as I have some scraps available at all times, I can make his socks the length he wants because who cares if the toe doesn't match, right? It's going to be in his shoe. So that is my one and only FO. A little bit of spinning, um, just spindle spinning. I did work a little on my on the round punies, merino slash angora. Here's that, that's coming. This is the last ounce, so this will be the third ply, and this is all I have left. Less than half. Um, so this hopefully will be done. We'll see by the next podcast. Because Disclaimer, I'm going to be really busy on my kitchen, and I might not get a lot done over the next few weeks. Because those walls have to be done before the cabinets arrive. And the cabinets are coming on February 5th. So it's a lot to do. And here are my gourmet stash ponies. Not a lot of progress on this one. But I didn't spin much once I uh, during and after Vogue. And I'll tell you why after I get to that. So those are my whips. Other than kind of sort of another one. But something I've been doing a lot of work on, I think I hear my son. He might come up here. But anyway, Vogue New York, I got some stash to show you. So let's start with, oh, let's start with my non-Vogue stash enhancement. This is an Aaron Makes Stuff spindle that he makes out of pencils, colored pencils. The, the shaft is red heart. And I just, I was on Instagram and I just hit refresh. And when I hit refresh, his shop update post came and I actually took my time and picked this out. It is 1.15 ounces, which is kind of the weight I like my spindles to be, around an ounce. And I haven't tried it out yet, but I can't wait. And I can't believe I actually landed one of his spin, uh, spindles. I seen some like laying around, but I didn't want to buy just any. I wanted one where I liked the colors and I could see the sides had some color in them because it's hit or miss. And I love this one and I got it. And um, I'll let you know what I think of it after I 
do some spinning on it. So now I'm going to put this in my little spinning spindle holder. Um, and then another non-yarn, my non-yarn purchase from um, Vogue was, are these bowls. So this is a yarn bowl. It was very expensive, but I fell in love with it. And I'm like, wouldn't this look beautiful on my kitchen table in my new kitchen? It is by Dan Tracy. He lives in Cortland, New York, and it's made of black walnut, and he's kind of engraved that in the bottom. I've seen his work before at, um, I believe he was at Rhinebeck, or it could have been at the Massachusetts, uh, the Northeast Fiber Festival, but I really like this one. There was another one made out of pear, and I just couldn't make up my mind. I got this because the size was more suited, and this I also bought for $25, and I'm going to put, I've been putting my jewelry in it. You can see I got my little uh, Blessed Mother necklace in here, but, um, you know, when I go to bed at night, I take off my wedding ring and my um, necklace, and I put them in here, and I just put it on the shelf, so I always know where my jewelry is, so I really love this, so now I have two yarn bowls. I have this one and my Jenny the Potter one, which is out of reach, and, um, I'm very happy with it. It's going to last forever, and I love it. And <laughs> and my Jill Draper yarn looks really nice in it. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. non yarny purchase. I bought this box. I never, I never thought I would. So she, um, at least as far back as I can remember, has had a display... And Vogue Dending Live, and I think she's done um, Stitches East, too, before. Had her whole village, and it's just amazing, amazing work at Vogue Dending Live. And this year, I bought this because of my senior love-along. So, in the Adopt-A-Senior program, you will have the opportunity to make things for your senior during the year. You can or you don't have to. The only requirement is a, a gift during the holidays at the end of the year. But if you wanted to, you could make like a little thingamadoo from this for your senior, just to put a smile on their face. It would be perfect because there's not much they can use there. Um, gift wise, clothes get lost, things, you know, things of a practical nature just get lost or taken away. Um, magazines would be good, but these are little things that just would put a smile on their face and they just to keep on the windowsill kind of thing. So I bought this with the intention of knitting stuff for my senior. And I also bought one of her little kits with some snowman, which will be part of the present for my senior at the end of the year. And I was thinking, I'll just Use, I'll put these on the end of an uh, I-cord, and I'll tie his present up with it. So, And I already know who my adopted senior is. Um, I Actually, I'm adopting two. One is um, Ed, and the other person is, um, her name is uh, El Elnora. And I just kind of clicked with them when I went there for the senior level on party, so... Another idea I thought would be awesome for your senior, and this person was there with an exhibit at, at Vogue Knitting Live, and it was a beautiful exhibit, is the designer of the Bluebird of Happiness. Her name it was Sarah Kellner. And here's her, her adorable business card. Isn't that adorable? So um, she doesn't have a book, but I, she was handing out these patterns for free, and I grabbed one. Just, you know, since I'm on the topic of fingers, that's another gift. So now my yarn purchases, you kind of saw a glimpse of this. I stopped at Jill Draper Make Stuff, and I saw this on Instagram. Um, Laura Nelkin flashed it, how she had gotten her hands on hers. It is called Rifkin. Uh, there's no color name on this, and she basically has the label just tied in the back, <laughs> which is kind of cute. I just heard the door. And here's the color. It's browns and like a very kind of light, almost popsicle orange and bright pinks. And it really looks beautiful together. And I'm going to make a rustic shawl with this. Um, I don't know if I'll design one or if I'll just look for something suitable 
uh, in my Ravelry library, but this is a, it's a very uh, generous 580 yard pre skate, you know, pre cake ball um, yarn. And uh, I just, I really love it. And I'm looking forward to knitting this up. Also, I fell in love with Jill's Rockwell yarns. Um, Rockwell yarns are her marled yarns. And she was actually working on a sweater in her booth with this yarn. It was a beautiful striped sweater. And I loved the fabric it was making. Um, I checked her gauge so I knew what gauge I would need to get that kind of fabric with this yarn. But I couldn't bring myself to buy a sweater's worth of yarn because I have the Amy Miller sweater. I have Mark's sweater to finish. I have another half-finished sweater for myself on the needles. Um, I have a sweater in my queue to make for my daughter, which I bought the yarn at Webs for already. And, um, so I just have too many sweater commitments to buy a sweater's worth of yarn, but I couldn't resist it. And I actually went back on Sunday and bought two skeins just to play around with. And I ended up designing a sweater. And that's why you don't see a lot of progress on much of anything is because I've been knitting and playing with swatches and I'm just going to give you a little peek so you can kind of get a feel of what my sweater might look like. It's going to have a pocket and some color work and it's going to be knit in the round but I used the brown which is called dark roast and that's on this. I'm, I'm actually toying with the, the, the pocket construction right now so that's uh, on the needles. And uh, this is actually my gauge swatch here, with the, and I also, you know, played around with the color work. And here's the green, which is my con uh, contrasting color. And I can't wait to write this up. And I actually already have a tech editor lined up, an amazing tech editor, because I've never written up a pattern designer. So I've taken classes with Donna Dracunis and I sent her a message. I said, would you please, please, please edit my sweater pattern for me? And she agreed to. So I know it's going to be well written because I want, I, I don't want to sell any pattern that's not well written. And um, so I don't know how long it's going to take me to write it up and get it back and all that stuff. But be on the lookout out. It's going to be the Guardian of Air sweater. I'm not going to show you my sketch of what it's going to look like. You'll just have to make do with this uh, swatch to get an idea of what it's going to look like. But it will be a little challenging. Um, it's not a simple, easy peasy sweater. There's going to be some interesting details. I can't wait. So this is this has been I've been obsessed obsessed. I actually, <laughs> I shouldn't show you this because you'd probably scare you to death, but I've been, I have another swatch. Anyway, I'm not going to show you. All right. So that is Jill Draper. Oh, and I grabbed some of her cute little notebooks. Aren't they adorable? So just a little, I already started using one. Uh, just a little scribble notebook. Keep one in my purse. Um, yeah. So Next, the first thing I got when I got there, because I knew this vendor was going to be there, is my friend Sandy had bought some Angora yarn at Rhinebeck and knit some fingerless mitts for her daughter with them. And I swear I came so close to just stealing them or bribing her to give them to me or something. So I went to the vendor and I bought enough for a nice sized pair of mitts and I bought a, this little mini skein for a little border contrasting and I'm going to knit myself a, a vanilla pair of fingerless mitts. The Angora is super warm, super soft and it doesn't pill and it just gets very halo-y and beautiful so I can't wait to knit these up. Once I get this pattern kind of all set I'm going to cast these on. Oh, I can't wait. Finally at Rogue Knitting Live, I stopped at another one of my favorite vendors, Long Island Livestock. It's a small alpaca 
slash llama farm out in Long Island. That's at Vogue Daily Live every year. They also do a Long Island Fiber Festival, which I don't know when it is. Um, but this is what I got from them, and I'll tell you the little story about this. My, um, my, I made a pattern, my pattern called the teacher cowl. I made for my sister Kim with this, with these yarns for Christmas. I had gotten it last year at Bogue Knitting Live, the yarn, and made the pattern just specifically for this yarn. Made one for myself, the white one, and a brown one for Kim, which you can check my, uh, I'm sure I've shown you. But um, it's my ca uh, pattern, the Teacher Cal. It's $5 in my Ravelry shop if you're interested. But when I gave it to Kim for Christmas, um, her brother-in-law and his wife were up from North Carolina. And her sister-in-law saw it and snatched it and, like, um, refused to give it back. So my sister Kim comes to me and she says, Amy, you're going to have to make me another cow. Diane won't give it back to me. And I looked at her and I was like, Kim, that's about $50 worth of yarn. She's like, gotcha. And she got her cow back. But um, Diane's husband, my sister's brother-in-law, came to me and asked me if I would make one for his wife. And he gave me the money for the yarn. So I told him I would see the vendor. And I went and I picked out this, and I'm going to be making a cowl for Diane, my sister's sister-in-law, uh, out of my teacher cowl pattern. The bulky, the main bulky yarn, if you look at what they do, is they tell you, well, they usually tell you who your um, animal is that donated their fur, but this is... 75% alpaca and 25% merino wool, and it's gorgeous, and it's in the color farm, farmhouse, farmhouse White, and it's 50 yards. This is a little more bouncy than the ones I made for my sister, so I might, it might be a little tighter than the other ones, but we'll see. And this is um, um, art spun but different than the one, uh, Once Upon a Time farm that I had for the other cows. She's now getting her art yarn from this farm. It's called Kaluna Farm Studios. And I liked it because it has some beautiful colors, but it's not as soft as the Wanus Once Upon a Time art yarn I used. Let's see. I'm going to get this straight. Kaluna Farms. And she calls it John's Home. Hand spun yarn, alpaca, merino, silk, soft silk, and it's plied with mohair. It's expensive, but it's just going to add the perfect touch to Diane's cowl. So that is that. Um, then I did get one other stash enhancement. I got in the mail um, my Hedgehog Fiber Club and Sock Yarn Club for January. So for sock yarn, I got the colorway Dust Bunny. Love it. Almost cast on socks with this. But I refrained and I used the Jill Draper because I've been in I'm in Jill Draper love. I'm in Jill Draper lust mood. <laughs> I'm loving everything Jill Draper. Jill's stuff. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I was gonna say her stuff tends to be rustic. And she's a Hudson Valley um, vendor, too, so I have a special place in my heart for her. But Some of her yarn is rustic, but the sock yarn I'm using has the cashmere in it, and it's beautiful, but it's everything's local. She hand dyes everything. It's all local, so I really love su supporting Jill, Jill Draper. And you should check out her Etsy shop, Jill Draper Makes Stuff. Here is the fiber, and this is going to be something new for me. This has linen, linen in it. It's merino, silk, and flax top, um, 125 grams, so probably a little over four. It's a little over four ounces, and it's got beautiful sky blue. It's got like a bronzy orange, a dark like storm cloud purple, and some greens. But I've never knit, I've never spun flax before, and it feels weird. I hope I, I hope I can do it justice. I'm kind of afraid to spin it. So we'll see. 
I'll probably spin this when I have a little more experience. I don't know. I really like it, but... And I know you got to start somewhere, right? Can't be afraid. So that's all my acquisitions. So now let me talk about Vogue. Wow. So it started on Friday. I had actually taken Friday off from work. And I ended up having to work until like 1.30, which really stunk. But it was something that I couldn't ignore work-wise. Um, yeah, I had gotten a text message in the morning from my, one of my... Uh, I'm in... Um, system support analyst um, and system design analyst at at my company and one of the programs I support was not working right or did not work as expected. It turned out to be my own fault too. I did one of the silliest, stupidest mistakes you can imagine, but there was like a glitch um, that happened on New Year's Day because the system was down for, for the end of the year and whatever. So I had to manually upload some data. And when I manually uploaded the data, I put a baseline date with 2014 instead of 2015. So when the program went to run the night before I was supposed to have the day off, it didn't pick them up because it was supposedly last year. So I had to download it again, change the date, re-upload, make sure it ran properly, then rerun the, the next program and make sure that ran properly. And I couldn't leave until that was done because there was a lot of people counting on that. So I didn't get down till, to New York till like 4 o'clock. My husband was a little upset because he really had to jump through hoops to get the weekend off. Being a chef, getting a weekend off is not easy. And we were looking forward to spending the day together. But we did have a nice dinner. And then we hung out in the room with my friend Karen. We drank some wine, visited, talked. We really had a nice day Friday. Um, Saturday morning, I woke up um, early. Because Saturday, I had um, a class with Patty Lyons. Patty Lyons, um, I think she's affiliated with Lion Brand Studio. <clears throat> And she has a couple of crafty class, but I, I chose her class, which was in two parts, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. I chose because I've been wanting to design a sweater for a long time, but didn't understand the construction and the math behind it. I had taken a class last year with Michelle, oh shoot, the, the big designer, Michelle from St um, Tension and Gage Yarn Store. She designs for Jared Flood, and I can't remember her name for the life of me. I'll get I'll put it in the show notes. But anyway, I took a class last year on the design, coming up with a design process, like uh, inspiration and that sort of thing. Um, and but this year I needed like a good solid math. And Patty's class was exactly what I was looking for. I was so pleased with the class. You have to be able to keep up though, and you can't be intimidated by math if you want to follow her classes. She moves at a fast pace and she you have to be able to grasp and understand. It's not for the faint of heart. Let's just put it that way. Because I know my friend Karen had taken a class from her, uh, I think Friday, about gauge, and she got totally lost. But Karen is not a math person. She's a artsy person, creative person. I am a math person. I am I I majored in math in college for a little while, and then I switched, but. You have to understand, I recommend Patty's class highly, but if you can't keep up, be prepared to not get it. So keep that in mind if you ever sign up for Patty's classes. Um, a little more about the class. So basically, she went from, she covered, <clears throat> here. She first of all, she gave us a nice size booklet, I would call it homework sheets, I'm not going to show you, but uh, like a, a homework that you could use to kind of solidify what you learned. So it brought you through the whole process again. And some basic, you know, um, you know, measurement sheets. So templates. So what did she cover? She, um, and this is her name, by the way, in her logo, Patty Lines. Fundamentals of Sweater Design. She, uh, 
she went from, she covered drop shoulder, modified drop shoulder, and set in sleeves. But the bulk of the class was how to make your calculations for a set in sleeve. She covered it in a way that you could use it if you are knitting a, a pattern that's already been written up and you want to adjust it. You can adjust it even if it has set in sleeves to fit all your measurements. She gave us the math um, to, to know how to do that. She taught us how to measure. She went over other sweater types, but not so much step-by-step -step how to do the math for them. But you can figure it out because she gave you the fundamentals. And um, it's like a huge formula. So I can plug in any numbers here, follow her step-by-step -step instructions, and I can get a pattern to be any shape I want. It also explained how to calculate set in sleeves. So if I want to design a sweater, all I need are the standard measurements for different sizes. Um, I might adjust that a little bit if I have patterning in my um, design to adjust for pattern repeats. <clears throat> and I can design a sweater using her formulas. Um, which is awesome and I'm really excited about and that's exactly what I did. I took her class Saturday. She barely made it though. She barely finished everything and she really kind of, if questions came up that were not applicable to the course she was teaching, she said, I'm sorry but I gotta stick with the agenda and that's really not, this is a fundamental class and that's you know about a specific design so I can't answer it. If we have time at the end, I'll answer your question. Um, and I appreciated that because it, you have to keep on task so you can grasp each step and she really presented it in a very very logical and easy to, for me to understand format. And it's written down so even if you did kind of get lost you should be able to go through her course material and be able to do it and I feel very confident even a non-mathematical person could do it if they went through just the course material. So Sunday, uh, Saturday night, okay so Saturday night, I Saturday was when all my friends came, Sandy and Lori and a whole the usual crew and I was in class all day and that I kind of regret but taking Patty's class was well worth it. So they did stay and ha hung out and had dinner with us, uh, Mark and I. And we ended up just going a couple of blocks away to a Japanese restaurant that was out of this world. I'm so glad we stopped there. I had chicken teriyaki. It was the best I ever had. It was perfect. Dare I say perfect. I stuck myself because every bite was just too good to be true. And it was very reasonably priced. So we had a nice dinner. They immediately left afterwards. And Mark and I went back to the room, drank some more wine that we had left over from the previous night, and talked. I taught, told them about my class and all this stuff. And then the next day, Mark went to the village. He, he was hanging out and doing his thing in the city. And I decided to hit the market again. And I kind of, I tried to, at last minute to get into a Mary Jane, Mary Jane Mucklestone class on um, designing um, color work patterns with different colors, but it, there was no getting in. I was hoping because the, which is not very nice, but I was hope I was thinking that maybe because the weather was very hazardous outside, there was like an ice storm and the roads were sheets of ice and nobody could get anywhere. Uh, that maybe there might have been some openings in the class, but it wasn't meant to be. So I went through the marketplace again, and this is when I got the um, Jill Draper Rockwell Mar um, yarn. I went back to her booth, and I decided I'm just going to get two skeins, and it's $30 a skein, so it isn't cheap. Um, I'm just going to get two skeins to play around with and see what kind of sweater I want. So I picked it up. And um, I did that, and I also, on Sunday, sat in front of a panel. It was um, Laura Nelkin, um, Stephen West, 
um, Susan B. Anderson and Josh Bennett. And there was a, uh, a person asking all the questions. We weren't allowed to ask questions, but she asked very good questions. And it was a very um, informative and very helpful. It made me think a lot. But one of the things that stood out to me the most was everybody talked about how different things inspired them and, and different tips about if you want to design. But one of the things Stephen West said is just fill your mind with yes, 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 and do it. And I think that's probably the best advice I've ever gotten because for years I have I had like pictures of things I'd want or I'd want I'd have something in mind that I wanted and I'd look through um, patterns to try and find it and never really found quite what I was looking for but I was like well I can't write patterns so I never tried and then finally I was just my mother asked for a cow uh, something that um, me to make her like a scarf and I made her a cowl out of cashmere and it was beautiful but she's like it's not really what I wanted it doesn't go down and keep my chest warm and her hair is very short so she says the back of my neck gets cold because it was cashmere kind of fell and didn't really go up the back of her neck so she wanted something that would cover the whole back of her neck and stay up there and not be drapey so that uh, I designed my urban village cowl as a result of my mom telling me what she wanted. She said, I want, I want a scarf that doesn't bulk up under my coat. So I wanted, she wanted it to lay flat. So I made it so that it would lay flat and she wanted a collar to keep her ears and her neck warm. So I made it with a collar and I made it so she could button it or not button it. And it just, then I realized I just designed something and I actually made another one and put it down and took notes as I made it and there was my first written pattern. Actually the cowl was my first pattern which I haven't written up but I could. It's a very simple pattern and I would probably offer it for free and that's the Robin's Nest cowl and it's on my project page and there's no pattern for it as yet but maybe I'll write that up. So um the panel was really wonderful. I got a picture with Stephen West, which was really cool, and he's a sweetheart, um, and definitely entertaining, and um, it was really nice. I was hoping to chat with, like, Susan B. Anderson. I've met Laura Nelkin a couple of times. She actually came to our um, Knitting Guild meeting once, and um, where else did I meet her? I, I feel like I met her somewhere else before. But she, I think she recognized me and she says, cause she waved to me when I ran into her once, which was kind of really cool. So anyway, it was just a, it was a really nice weekend. My husband and I, um, left there around five o'clock. I sat and chatted with people. It was really, really nice. Um, we head back, my son picked us up. I had Monday off cause it was Martin Luther King day. And I sat down and I sketched out this sweater and started swatching with the Rockwell. And that's when I contacted um, uh, Donna Dracunas and I said, Donna, if you would do this, I would really appreciate it. I, I have not um, written up a sweater pattern before and I might need some hand holding, and I really want someone that's really experienced in doing this to make sure it's well written. And if you can't, if you could rec recommend really good people that are really good with sweater patterns, I'd appreciate it. So she said she would do it, and she also promised to hook me up with good test knitters and a good sample knitter because um, once the pattern's done, I think I'm going to ask pay someone to knit it up because I just don't have time, and I really want to get it published, and I can't do that without a final product, right? So um, that's kind of it, <laughs> as if I didn't talk enough. Um, I, I'll throw in some pictures from Vogue Knitting Live, and um, I really hope that no matter where you live, you can at least get to some kind of wonderful um, fiber-related event. I feel so fortunate to be close to New York City and close to Rhinebeck and be able to enjoy actually three, it was Stitches East as well, but I heard that there is not going to be a Stitches East this year. I don't know. That could be, that's a rumor that I heard at Vogue. 
Um, I have noticed that it has become um, smaller and smaller every year. Much, probably half the vendors as it had the first one I went to, and not a lot of people going. Um, I didn't go last year, but my friends Sandy and Laura did, and they said that it was pretty quiet. But so, regardless, I have opportunities to some of the best fiber related events in, from where I live, and I feel very fortunate. And if you can make it to one uh, at least once, I say you should really, really try and go for it. Um, and with that said, I'm going to say goodbye. Remember to check me out at the Moms with Yarn podcast. I had such a blast um, podcasting with Sharon. And uh, check out the threads in the Ravelry group for the Senior Love Along and the 2015 Goals Contest. And thank you very much. I'll see you guys in... And-